good morning, and welcome to It's a New Day. Here are your hosts, Willard and Betty Teeson. Good morning. We want to welcome you to It's a New Day. Today, stay with us. I know that's going to be a great program, and I know that God wants to touch your life today. Well, the Lord wants to bless us. There's no question about that, and encourage us. Um, Betty, I'm looking forward to it. Dr. James Stone is back with us today. He was with us for a period of time. I think it's just about a year ago now. Maybe it's... I didn't even ask him how far long it was, and I don't remember those things, but I know you're going to enjoy him very much. Got, got some interesting perspectives to talk about. We'll be starting off in the, in the book of Mark, probably chapter 4, and, and getting on from there and talking about the, uh, the parable of the souls. Stone, he's with us from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm going to get it straight this time. He told me last time he was here I had a hard time with Baton Rouge. But anyway, it's good to have you back with oh, us. It's my privilege to be back with you. Good. Looking forward to the time. Uh, as a matter of fact, you, you know, I, just a, can I give people a little bit of background? Sure. You were a seminary professor for quite a few years. Several Pastored years. a church prior to that time, I believe it was. And 17 years pastoring, 17 okay. years in academic world. And, and then left that, and you're now kind of in an itinerant ministry in a very different thing than you'd been doing at all before any of those things. Oh, it's amazing how, uh, how I jokingly say that the Lord has taken me out of the ministry. But more ministry now is occurring than before. It's just uh, when I started what God is doing about five, six, seven years ago, I uh, mentioned that we were a new ministry was being formed. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of like Abraham, we didn't know where we were going. But uh, what an understatement. Uh, where he's taken us is completely out of the ministry. <laughs> and yet still ministry is occurring, but... But, but in a very different context from yes. what you'd experienced prior to that yeah, time. Yeah, the emphasis let's, shifting. Let's, I know we're not, this is not where we're going to be focusing and spending all our time, but let's just chat about that. Just, you know, where is your ministry taking place now? How is it taking place that makes it so different from where it was? Well, before, ministry was me doing something for you. See, <laughs> whether I was preaching or whether I was teaching, I was doing something for you. In fact, I was actually using you for my ministry. See, I, and so now what God has done is taken me out of that, and now I, I know I live in you. See, so ministry is occurring between me and you, and that's, and that's the only place ministry can occur is in relationships. We, when we hear the word ministry, our, our boxes lock on up here, and we think of a professional thing we're doing, mm -hmm. whether we're preaching or teaching a class or praying for someone mm -hmm. or helping mm -hmm. for someone. See, we have a it's kind of a formalized, institutionalized uh, concept that has developed in our mind, but that was, that's totally foreign in the New Testament. Ministry in the New Testament is actually what occurs among people. So that's what I mean by taking me out of the ministry, is taking me out of that formal setting to where I preached to you, I taught to you, I helped you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, which mm -hmm. basically meant I was using you to try to get my fulfillment out of my ministry. See, so I was, I was trying to get my identity out of my doing for God, rather than experiencing the love of God through you that gave me my identity. As I entered in your life mm -hmm. and you entered mm -hmm. in my life, then I experienced the love, the affection, the, the acceptance, the approval, and so I had a sense of well-being. Well before, I was trying to get that sense of well-being out of my doing. And so I, I actually ended up using you rather than living in you. So uh, it's changed. It, that, it's really quite a radical. Oh. And it's, 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 it, the outside may not look different, but the heart from where you come yes. is yeah. totally different. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the outside takes on a different uh, gentry, a different environment, be, because you lose the, the uh, presumptuousness of being the one up here and they're down here. So you, you lose okay. that, and you come down to where we're right here. Yeah, we're together in this. We're sharing this together. This is yeah. God's doing something among us. Yeah, and uh, really what happens is that, that, is that uh, and, and this is really scary at first because uh, it, 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 it countered everything I had been taught. You know, I, you know I'm, I'm the professor teaching preachers and pastors and how to, te how to pastor church and, and do whatever. And so I, I know all the, all the things we said. But what it does, it has destroyed the vertical hierarchy in what we have developed in the church. And I've come to recognize there, are, there is no vertical hierarchy of authority in the church. It's rather a horizontal sequence. See, uh, for example, I could illustrate it by uh, Trinity, first, second, third person. 
-hmm. See, well, when we see first, second, and third person, we just automatically, even though we don't maybe do it consciously, three is somewhat less than two, and two is somewhat less than mm -hmm. one, and we go one, two, three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. See, and yet it's mm -hmm. not that way. Jesus said, uh, said uh, no man has seen God at any time except the Son, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, declares him. So out of the bosom of the Father comes the Son. See, and out of the Father and the Son comes the Holy Spirit. One, two, three. See, yes. now, now we yes. put, that in the, put that into the New Testament uh, in 1 Corinthians, and he gave first apostles, and he gave uh, uh, first apostles, secondary prophets, third read teachers. After that, miracles. We again develop one, two, three. And, and uh, what opened that up to me was in uh, Romans 10, where, uh, where Paul's talking about the same thing, but there's no sense of vertical hierarchy when he says it here. He says, whoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. But how can they call unless they believe? How can they believe unless they hear? They hear right? How can they hear unless there's a preacher? How can, how can they be a preacher unless they're sent? See, no, no vertical. No, no, this, this is all horizontal. This, horizontal. It's a sequence. You can, sequence. You can, yeah, it's a right. sequence. Okay. And so when you come back, when it, how, how can the preacher go as he's sent? It just dawned on me, I bet you that word sent is the word apostle. It just came as you were talking about that. I just realized the sent one is apostolic or apo in, the, in yeah. the Greek. But in anyway. the Greek, yeah. It's, and it's the word that we translate apostle. It's the same word that we get apostle from. See, in fact, it's translated sent more times in the New Testament than apostle. Then never knew apostles that. Never, not a translation. Never knew that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Apostle is not a translation, it's a transliterated. Yeah. It's carried right out of the Greek into the English. They, we would we would probably have been better off if they'd translated it every time instead, instead of, just, of using the word apostle, because apostle is a Greek word, really. Yeah. Which uh, simply means a sent one. I mean yeah, which would he use every time if that would have been the case. Exactly right. See if we had that idea, one who is sent and one who goes in the power of the one who sends him. Is, is really, I think, the essence. You see? Right. And so uh, if, if I'm sent, I'm going to preach. If I preach, there's going to be teaching going on. If there's going to be teaching, there's going to be hearing going on. And if you're hearing, hearing. you're going to believe. That's and if right. you believe, you're going to have salvation. See, it's a, it's a sequential thing. And so that's what it's done. It's, it's just reshaped reshape the ministry for me. And that's what I mean, taking me out of the ministry, because it's, it's destroyed that vertical hierarchy. Now, it's, it's easy to sit here this morning and talk about it, but we're talking about a process of time, and James didn't want it, that vertical hierarchy to be destroyed. Well, you hide your identity in that hierarchy, yes. didn't you? I mean, yes, that's where I was getting my identity. That's where I was getting my sense of fulfillment, is I was looked up to as the preacher, the pastor, and, and I was being somewhat successful, so I was getting mm -hmm. positive feedback, right. so I was getting my identity in that, instead of... Jesus. The, and, and what kept coming through, you know, I kept saying, but God, but God, he said, but, but I'm your identity. But, but God, but God, I'm your source. You know, and, and it just kept coming. And, and amazing, he just kept taking those things away. Now, see, what I'd like to be able to say said here is that I had a quiet time with the Lord and and he the Lord me. revealed this to me, and forever <laughs> after that, I was changed. Right. <laughs> but it didn't Sounds happen. good, but doesn't yeah, work it, that it way. It does not happen that way. Uh, uh, in fact, someone said it this way. We were riding down the car one time, and uh, had the car full, and my wife was sitting in the front seat with me, and his back seat was full, and, and one guy spoke up, a friend of mine. He said, you know, when you stepped out four years ago by faith, that was a great step of faith that you take, taken to take, step away from a from a a paycheck, either pastoring or college professor, and, uh, and I was trying to formalize, formalize a good answer, you know, and my right. wife spoke up and said, well, really, it's more circumstances. <laughs> so really what it was, it was God working in the circumstances that got me there rather than a fine lofty decision that I made that got me there. Well, I've come to recognize that in reality, if you look back in your life, it's always been the circumstances of God moving your life that got you where you wanted to go. See, and until pressure came, and, and, any, and I think this is true across the board, we never make prog uh, a progress towards the, the, where we should be going. We'll never do that until pressure comes on us and forces us out of our comfort zone, forces us to cry out to God in order for Him to move us where He wants us to go. 
See, so I've come to recognize that God works intricately in the circumstances of my life to get me where I want to go. So it just takes me out of the picture altogether. It starts putting more understanding. I mean, here's God at work. He's a bigger God very yes. often. He is much larger yes. in working in my life than I would want to give. You know, we want to find, because we find identity in who we are, in our ability to make decisions, though, we find it difficult to give God that kind of credit. Oh, we, we can't, because if we do, it means my ability to make the decision uh, is not my ability to make the decision. And see, and that, that, that comes down to, we're talking about the very issue of Christianity. See, the very, the very, the very core of what it really means to be Christian. And, and it's just amazingly, I would not have said this five years ago or six years ago, but I've come gradually to come to recognize that it is indeed 100% Jesus and nothing me. And uh, when I make that statement to, to people, I don't think you probably thought it, but, but as a whole, <laughs> when I well, make that statement... don't give me that much credit. <laughs> don't give me that much credit, okay? Well, I try to, try to keep from getting crucified, crucified too many times. <laughs> Learn like Paul to put the God forbids in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, I find when you say 100% Jesus and nothing us, the thought that ring comes to your mind immediately, well, I got to do something. See, uh, because we, we, we don't understand the gospel enough to know that, it, well, if it's 100% Jesus, it means, I, means I'm just a, a puppet on a string and, and um, I have no free will. See, I have no, uh, no freedom of choice. And uh, I've come to recognize that, that we have, we've twisted that freedom a little bit. Our, our, our freedom to choose choice, what we hold dearly to in mm -hmm. Western civilization, is actually a product of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See, because they wanted that, they, they wanted this fruit to be able to make them wise so they would know good, so they would know evil. And make right choices. And make right choices, which puts them in control of their destiny. Yeah, well, that was Adam and Eve. We're going back to the Garden of Eden. Just for yeah. some of you wondering, what tree are we talking about? We're talking about the two trees in the garden. Go on. Yeah, which is, I've come to recognize those trees are in our lives every day. Right. You see, even, I agree. And not, we're not discrediting the fact that it was there in the garden. They, are, they were there in the garden, but what they represent is in our life. You see, so when I want, I want to be able to be in control of my destiny. Oh, and that was what Eve and Adam were struggling with in the garden exactly of Eve. Exactly right. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a nice guy. Well, sure you are. <laughs> said, I mean, for said you wanting to, for, for wanting to have the, the ability to make right choices <laughs> yeah. seems like a tremendously yeah. good idea. Yeah, and so I want to make the right choices. I want to choose God's way. See, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not as these bums out here who's choosing their own way. I'm, I'm choosing God's way. But there's no difference between me and this guy out here. See, I'm still in control of my life. Because I'm the one making the choosing. That, yes, that's the point. That's the point. See, I'm the one making the decision. I'm still in control of my life. That's what we all want. See, we want that, we want that identity myself. See, and so I'm going to make the choice myself. Oh, I'm going to choose God. I'm going to do right some of the time. <laughs> well, we, don't, we don't include that part. No, we? <laughs> no we, don't. we don't talk about the part that, that, that which we don't want to see keeps popping up, you know, and that which we want to do, we, we can't quite get there all the time. But that's the reality. But see, I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose. Well, that's the struggle. Well, that's a, that's a, a freedom of, of choosing that comes out of the tree. Our freedom we have is a freedom of rejection. Now, when I say a freedom of rejection, okay, okay. You, you, you can push that back a little bit further and say, uh, well, you're making a choice to reject. Well, our rejection is really doesn't come from a choice. Our rejection actually comes out of deception. See, when God loves me, yes. and, and, and through the course of this week, we're going to talk about that, yep. God loving us and his light shines sure. into our heart. And if we could just let that light shine in our heart, that light itself contains the power to drive out all darkness, see, but I won't let the light shine in my heart. See, there, I have that freedom to reject, uh, and, the, and that rejection comes out of, out of assuming that I can do that. See, I don't make a conscious decision to say, okay, here's God and here's me, I'm going to choose me. Uh, if, if I offer you life, you're going to choose life. Right. But the reason why we're not experiencing life is we're deceived in thinking where life is at. 
See, and that's where the deception comes in. We think, we think, as a kid, if I could just get to, to make my decisions, if I could just get away from, you know, become independent to make my decisions, if I could just be my own Some man. Some of us want to leave home just for that reason, yeah, so we can make yeah. our own decisions. Huh? Yeah. And, and I look back in my life and decisions I made hadn't been too good. <laughs> in fact, Paul said, Paul said it this way uh, and, and pulls right in. And in fact, this principle we're talking about is throughout the New Testament. It is the, the underlying theme of the New Testament and the Old Testament. But Paul said, uh, this is our rejoicing, the testimony of, of our mm -hmm. conscience, mm -hmm. that in, in, godly, or in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation or our manner of living in this world and more abundantly towards you. See, he's stating that his, and he goes on in the context to, to talk about everyday decisions, his everyday living is a product of the grace of God, not a product of fleshly wisdom. Now, fleshly wisdom doesn't mean choosing bad things. Fleshly wisdom means the concept of choosing. See, using our, our, uh, yeah. our mind to, mm -hmm. to make a decision, which is flesh, it's flesh, it's soulish. It's in the intellect, the emotions and the will, not in the spirit. Yeah, it's the natural man instead it's of the, the spirit man. It's the natural man, man yeah. yes, the natural man. Yeah. And basically what we're doing in Christianity today is trying to live spiritually naturally. That's right. You're absolutely using our natural resources to be the kind of person we presume a spirit person would, would be. Yeah. And you never get there. And, and you can't get there because you can't, to, to move out of the natural realm into the spiritual realm, there's no act of the natural can do it. There's no act of the flesh can move you into the spiritual realm. See, and we keep trying to do that with spiritual uh, in that same passage. Well, and that's why we we do spiritual things. Oh. If I can, you know, spiritual acts, yeah. all those kinds of things, because we think by doing them that makes us spiritual. Okay, let's name a couple of those spiritual things. Oh, you aren't going to get me to yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but hey, hey, well, I'll name them and say that oh, okay, uh, I, that the I, I, comments I of the guests is not responsibility of those. <laughs> no, but if you're going to church, yes, there we okay, go. Okay, just for the sake of being spiritual, yes. wrong. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now if I am going and I'm participating in fellowship, and yes. I'm going to use that term instead of going to church, because ch according to what I understand, is it's an assembling together of people that have a like faith in yeah. Jesus Christ, yes. Yes. and they go to mutually edify yeah. and Ex build one another up. Yes. That to me is yes. what? Experiencing the love of God in our relationships. In one another in relationship. Yes. That's church. Yes. Now, any other reason is wanting to be spiritual by doing. Yeah, it's a okay. nice religious okay. act. Anyway, there's, other, there's, all, there's yeah, a million well, other ones. Well, too. Jesus uses it. He, he gives us a perfect parable. Oh, boy. You know, you know the publican and the, and the Pharisees went up to the temple to pray. Went to church. They're praying. And he says, I thank God. I'm not his other. He's worshiping. He says, I, I, I pay my tithes. I fast. I'm a decent guy. See, those things are, those are nothing wrong in those self, in those no, no, self. No, no, no. But when they become, as he introduces the parable by saying, you have this parable of those who trusted in themselves. See, in other words, those doing yes. of those things was, was how he thought he was going to get there. So that's what you meant by we, we keep trying to do spiritual things to get there. Yeah. See, and that's where the error becomes is because we're trying to do fleshly, mm -hmm. uh, temporal things to move into the spiritual realm, and you can't do it. Now, when the spirit has control, you will see the interaction here. Yeah. See, yeah. there should be a natural talking yeah. to Jesus and a natural yeah. sharing of Jesus, but we don't have that natural thing flowing because Jesus is alive in us, and so we try to create them by by the flesh doing them see and you can't do it you just can't do it and what God's got to bring us back to is the, is the same thing he did when we got saved we have to come back to the point of realization that we've messed it up again I, I can't do it I, I can't, can't do I it. can't I'm, I can't be spiritual yeah and I can't you know as religious as I am it isn't bring spirit life to me yeah. by doing making my choices yeah and, uh, and and moving into the grace of God is choices will be made but it would be just a natural flowing of God doing it, not out of the activity of our mind. Now, now throughout this week, we're going to be talking a lot about that because that's where the problem's at. This mind is actually what throws us. However, what we're doing in the visible church today, we're trying to get there by our mind. 
N never in the history of the church and of you know and being in academia uh, in all of my almost all of my life 36 years all together uh, there's a lot of research going on and uh, I don't think there's ever a time in the history of the church where church people are so concerned about learning you know there is it's just it's just coming everybody's got a pencil everybody's got a notepad everybody is learning it's seminars it's coming symposiums coming and going but what grips my heart is Paul's statement that in this day we we'll be ever learning and never come to knowledge of the truth he did say that <laughs> you see, but it's <laughs> That's amazing. because we're trying to learn yes. up here yeah <laughs> see we're trying to learn up here rather than understanding Understanding truth is an experience with a person. It's not an activity of the mind. But we don't separate that. Oh, we to don't us, separate. We it. we don't. You know, for most of us, this this is a difficult concept. I mean, I oh, yeah. uh, that that truth is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Outside of Jesus is no truth. Mm -hmm. Now, I, 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 and now this is really hard. To, 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 to come to, but because we're taught, He is truth. Yes. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And when we're talking about spiritual truth, and I, this is what I, the, the, the trouble is we have to discern now or separate between what is natural truth and what is spiritual truth, in a way, I mean, in the sense sure, that yes. there are things.